So I really have three phases of this, and I'm using a gaming model rather than a traditional testing model for a lot of these things that allows the student learning to take place in their own time and space. So I have three phases. One is students have to acquire these skill sets. They have to be able to get to a place where they can read music, where they can understand chords, where they can understand scales and modes, so that that is not the stumbling block. If you had to analyze Chaucer and you were going, cat, that would be way too slow to understand a piece of literature. And the same with music. If they're having to sound out where these notes are and what is this chord, they can't understand the higher level functions of being able to put together music, compose and analyze and understand music. So that's the critical thinking, is once they've acquired the skill set, they go on to do critical thinking, and that's specifically composition and analysis. And then the phase three is collaboration and communication. It's not enough to sit there in your own room and compose, and pretty much everybody can now because they have tools that anybody can own on their own, their own time, create and publish, but how to collaborate and work with other people. So this is where the same ethos that digital humanities has comes into play from my point of view. So we're in this digital arts and humanities, we're trying to optimize the student learning so that they can use these technologies in a way that's very personal and applicable. Uh, it's a very D, D, DIY approach, meaning I couldn't find what I wanted. So I actually went out and created these technologies. I worked with a programmer who happens to be my husband. And <laughs> guess what we do on the weekends? Yes, we talk about how to generalize music program. So I, I've worked a lot to create this program myself because I felt very strongly that one, I wanted these students to be able to digest this, this information and, and I wanted it accessible and low cost because at a community college, we take the top 100% of people applying and <laughs> the population is very varied. So, and the, the idea of retention and persistence is very important to us, as, as all of you, I'm sure. So we found that there's a need for freeing the teachers from the tedium of grading fundamental skills. And because the students need so much time to practice these fundamental skills, the teachers have to give them feedback. Now, once I've freed up the teachers, they can then use that same time to be more generous with their time and the students so the actual learning exchange can be deepened and strengthened, which I, I feel very strongly about. So my process is a gaming model. So rather than a one-time test, you come into a class and you're all tired because it's 9 o'clock in the morning and musicians don't like to get up at 9 in the morning, <laughs> and they have a test and they're falling asleep. They didn't get their coffee, they didn't get their breakfast. So my transference is to go to the three o'clock in the morning, I'm up, I'm on coffee, I've got my things going on, and you get to decide how much time you spend. If you want to spend five hours doing this and get an A, and you're making mistakes along the way, that's great. But the power is then, that gaming model, the power is in the student's hand. It's fun, it's engaging. I've had a lot of feedback from students. One is a gamer and he said, I'm not doing any other gaming but this, this class and my other class are suffering because I wanted to get first and I'm running tournaments so they're competing with each other in class. I wanted to get first and I was up to 2,000 points and I saw someone passing me. So he's staying up all night doing fundamental skills in music. <laughs> Which is pretty amazing at a college level where these students are not always motivated to do their homework. Okay, so it, it creates this sense of curiosity and determination and it rewards their time on task, which deepens their learning with the material. Again, this is all just acquiring the skill set. Unlimited repetition, if they're willing to put in 
a thousand times doing the same thing, they're going to get the skills and they're going to improve their grades and their scores. And so they're getting immediate feedback 24-7. They're allowed to do a problem, it's automatically generated, and they immediately see did they get it right, they're wrong, and they're shown the right answers. They can do learning while testing. So the benefits really about student equity, this is the big buzzword now on our campus, equity, and they're trying to find ways to make learning equitable. What that means is we're not trying to lower the bar for students who are either poorly prepared or have issues with being in school for whatever reason, sex, race, gender, whatever reason the equity issue is, is barring a student. Charles Steele likened it, the equity problems as as having a snake in the room. So you're told there's a snake in the room. There's a snake in this room. And if you're in the middle of a test and half your attention is looking, well, where is that snake? Where is that snake going to attack? Is it right next to me? That's what it's like having test anxiety for whatever reason you have this equity problem. So we're trying to find ways to alleviate this problem in a very real way. So the part of this program is to give the students access and even the playing field, meaning if they're willing to put in the time and have the motivation, they can overcome these issues that are in inherent in having equity issues. So the technology is supporting the success of these non-traditional students. We have a variety of learning styles and you can learn while you're doing the testing. So anxiety, testing anxiety is decreasing and uh, the success that these students are getting while doing this online testing is really in, uh, apparent in the face-to-face -face class situation. So I'll show you a case study with one of my students in just a second. So again, there's three phases. The first phase is just the acquiring of the necessary skill set to be successful in music on any level, whether you're a performer or investigating some sort of music history. As a more humanities-based research project, you still have to have the skill set of being able to read and understand a score, a piece of text, which is a written piece of music. So, and then the phase two, the, the critical thinking with composition analysis, we've now instituted that in the website and uh, with online posting of compositions and, and being able to do blogging and discussions online. <clears throat> Right now, I'm uh, expanding this. We're in the middle of a statewide music theory competition using the website. And this is through the Music Association of Com California Community Colleges, otherwise known as MAC. And we have a conference coming up in November. And so the students of these community colleges throughout California are competing right now. And in just the first week of the semifinals, there was 25,000 correctly answered problems done amongst these students. There's about 30 students competing statewide. So 25,000 problems just in one week of these students doing this. Um, the skill sets are all kinds of musical things like scales and chords and key signatures, intervals, things like that, meter, rhythm, and... Uh, I want to talk about this one student that I've named him Sam. That's not his real name. But he was a uh, ESL student. He was from Central America. And he had very, very large experience in playing music in his own cultural tradition by ear, but had no music reading skills. So he's coming into our program with very little music literacy. And he was uh, slow at acquiring new knowledge. So his written acquisition of new knowledge was very slow for him, and he was a slow tester. And so the first two-thirds of the class, he was getting Ds on all in-class tests. And for many tests, he ran out of time. He just didn't have enough class time to complete it. So he was very motivated, and he was the top scorer in the class. He, he personally got 4,500 correct correctly answered problems. And the class average for the semester was about 1,000. And the class as a total had 25,000 correct answers. 
So he was doing really well, and he spent two hours a day using this website doing this acquisition of fundamental skills. So his speed was not fast, but here's his statistics. He was getting almost every time extra credit for number of correct problems, and he was finishing all of his online problems. So by the end of the semester, he came out of the final and he was so excited. This is a two hour final over two days, each day two hours. So after four hours of a final, he was radiant because one, he had finished and he came up to me and he said, I understand that now. And he was so excited because he had spent so much time doing this on his own. He was just in front of the computer in the lab doing this. He finally, this was in the, the example I'm showing you is from 2015, but he successfully got through theory one, two, three, four, a very hard sequence to get through, but it was strictly his own determination. And there's uh, one of the ways to see your own data online. And you can see every week, he's far out distancing what the other students are doing in terms of number of correct problems. But the effect was he was able to um, successfully navigate through uh, the very challenging theory sequence. So phase two is critical thinking, composition, and analysis. And here's an example of a piece of, this is a handle excerpt. And so the students are required to put chords and Roman numeral function on it. And there's some little discussion questions that are in there. And so each student, as they go through it, are now able to see when something is correct and when something is partially correct. And then they can go back in and redo that. So this allows them to get to a place where it's abstracting. What's going on with the music? What are the notes? To how does it actually function? So this is one of the higher levels of critical thinking for a music theorist. And um, what I'm doing now is I've just started a composition class with these online components. And so, for example, they are discussing in a group situation. I have about 28 people in the class. So in class, I lecture about these concepts that we're talking about. Then they break into groups every week and they show each other their composition. So they're composing every week. And I'm using technology to mediate this process so that you have a composition they're posting every week and their scores on Google Drive. And so they can all look at each other's compositions. This is something they all have access to. And uh, their SoundCloud compositions are posted. And then they have to journal about their process. And they talk about what they're doing with their piece that week, what they, uh, what they got back from their discussions every week with their other classmates, and how how they were thinking about expanding this because they have to keep expanding into bigger compositions and what their musical inspirations are for the week. And then they're also required to respond to two other people's posts. So they post once, respond twice, and they all do this on the website. And then I can also give comments to them back as well as grade on the website. So everything's very centralized and allows them to communicate with each other, discuss ideas, and also uh, listen to the pieces at the same time. So I've created these books. Uh, part of this is access, part of it is low cost. I've had to become my own publisher so that the books could be low cost because you all know the publisher cost, they triple or quadruple or quintuple, whatever you're doing as an author, they give you some little pittance and then they take the bulk of it and then the bookstore takes the other bulk of it and the students really lose out. And for, for example, the basic music fundamentals text, the best one nationally is about $150. I know, for a music fundamentals text, that's really crazy. So I brought the cost down and for the website use and the textbook, it's about $40. So it makes it something that students can afford and students get a lot of practical results. And so I've done that with all these workbooks for all the different levels as well as the composition handbook. So now I'd like to bring up my students and also to go to the website.
if it's going to work, we'll see. Um, <clears throat> the actual live website is on there now. I've tried SoundCloud. It's also down. I wanted to play Hyunjin's piece, but it's looking like it's suffering from the same issues that uh, Twitter is. But here's the actual website, and you can see it has the different components. My website is working, interestingly, but not so much the music, so can't do that. So I'd like to bring up our presenters. We have with us today two of my students from San Diego Mesa College, and we have Petra Pes Prescott and Hyunjin Kim, and they are both in theory, ear training, and composition classes at Mesa College. So Petra, please. Do I get to show on my website? Uh, it might work, yeah. Did you want to log in? Yes. I'll, I'll get that going, you can right. start. Hello, my name is Petra. I am a first year theory student at Mesa College, and I came in with the hopes of becoming a music composition student. Um, Mesa College is one of the only ones around that has an very basic level you can get in and learn how to actually compose. Um, all the other ones that I was looking into already wanted things recorded and I was like I need to learn how to do that so how do I do that so I came to Mesa and uh, with the understanding that I was going to be learning how to write it out on paper. I was going to buy a lot of staff paper and I was going to hand write all of these things and learn how to do all of this by hand and how to get it out of my head and onto paper. Um, I was very wrong because we live in a technology age and I came in and found out that you just need a computer and some software or the Moss Lab at Mesa and they have everything for you. So I came in with this understanding. I was completely blown away and how am I even going to learn these things because I am an old soul in a young body <laughs> and I don't do technology well. So this website that she created, I've had the fortune of coming into it pretty much all the bugs are out if there were any bugs and I have been just able to understand where I'm coming from. I'm one of those people that's not a very good test taker. I don't like time constraints. It makes me nervous. And I learned by repetition on these, for theory, on the matches, you can go in as many times as you need to and do it as many times as you need to to be able to get the correct answer. It shows you the answer right away. And we'll just do match 10 that I haven't looked at yet. So you begin, you have these different, uh -oh. Can I take a um, okay. okay. I don't want them to download them now. Okay, well then, anyway, you go in, you have the different sections, you do your problem, it corrects you right away, which I find very, very helpful. Um, so that you can know what the correct answer was. I tend to memorize more than I think about the actual what the answer should be. Um, I memorize faster. So for this, it's a little bit of both. You memorize the correct answer, and in that, you learn 
why it's the correct answer. Like, oh, okay, that doesn't work because it needs a double sharp there. Okay, why does it need a double sharp when it's just whatever? Um, so that has been very helpful for me, being able to repeat it and repeat it and repeat it till I can get an A because that is, I'm a perfectionist. <laughs> <laughs> and I, <laughs> so I can repeat it over and over again. There's practice room, which isn't, I guess, the best way to go because that doesn't help me with my match tournament scores, but it helps me with my repetition, and I can do it as many times as I need to. It can be at any time. Right before a test, I can go in and refresh my memory. I can go in and see what it is. Um, it's also very helpful, this website. She gives us a, um, there's a deadline, but the understanding that students don't very do very well with deadlines all the time. Life happens, and you're lazy, and every other excuse under the sun. And so there's a six-hour grace period that I've more than once had to take advantage of. I just, it's um, such a well-thought-out tool that has brought me as someone who didn't know what I was stepping into, not a normal learner, and made it completely easy for me to grasp these concepts and get the A. <laughs> so. Well, hello there. <laughs> so my name is Hyun Jung, or you can call me Philip. I prefer any name. Yeah. And then this music literacy, as a kind of self-taught music theory and composition student. I did no notes. I kind of knew where it was there, just in my head somewhere, but it was never concrete. So whenever I make music, there's like one note that was just really wrong. It just didn't like, uh, no, that's not right. But this music literacy test is a great tool, a great tool to hone your skill in music theory. And the very fascinating thing about it was the motivation it gave me. So in nature, it's a repetitive drill in music theory, but she made it into a tournament. I need to get the first place. Like, mm -hmm. I need it. And that, <laughs> that really motivated me. It made me do more. It was not some mundane task or everyday work. It was actual like obstacle or a puzzle that I need to solve in quick succession to be the first place. And if I get the first place, that's good. But I need to hold on to it, you know? I have to keep on at it to get the first place. If I'm not, I still get the motivation to take that throne away from that person and say, <laughs> yeah. But sometimes I lost many times. There were many great theorists out there, sadly. But, <laughs> but the other thing was really great about it is I can retake it as many times as I want, as she said. And as I retake it, I get more practice. When I get more practice, I get more exposure. When I get more exposure, my time gets shortened. And I get time shortened, I know that my deciphering skill is increasing. I know what chords there are. I know what notes there are. So for example, in a G minor chord, a G minor key, I see an E flat, G, B flat, and a C sharp. What is that? An E7, E flat 7 in harmonic, and a German augment is 6 chord. Why do I know that? It's flat 6, 1, flat 3, and sharp 4. It's just in there. It just kind of like, like, you need to get it right. And you just get used to seeing patterns. You start seeing stuff. You start seeing notes. You start memorizing. It becomes concrete. You know what, you know what the notes are. You start being more confident and start being fast. And not just speed. The accuracy goes up dramatically. So when you get a point, when you get a question wrong, your points get deducted. Like, ah! Like, why does that happen? I have to go back there up again. Like, I have to get the one question right. So I developed a habit of double checking again, 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 quickly, quickly, quickly. And I started, and that habit started to grow on me. And as I'm composing or music analyzing, I start seeing the mistakes, or I start seeing that I made a mistake by double checking it. It becomes much more accurate, much more better, much more faster, much more fluid in my musical knowledge and my musical language and this program and this way of learning 
really made it concrete, made it easy to understand, made it easy for us to go into and have actual fun, not just taking tests, like just doing homework, like, uh, 10 more minutes. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, nope. But this like, it makes you do it. It makes you do it for maybe hours, up, up to even an hour or a few hours. And I thought it was great motivational idea to have because many students are lazy like me. <laughs> but this program was very helpful and I really enjoyed it when I was using it. So my, um... my hope is at some point that this could be expanded beyond just music because I think this mode of testing is one that our students are already thinking in these terms and, and, and wanting to take back the power of learning in their own hands. So uh, at some point I would be really open to having other types of skills being incorporated. Okay. All right, thank you.